Hey guys, Hermit here from Photo Insomnia and today I want to talk to you about how to create a wide angle image when you don't have a wide angle lens. Let's say for example you didn't pack one in your bag, you didn't take it with you or you haven't yet bought one um, and you're using a standard kit lens which is typically 18 to 55 or 18 to 250 depending on what kind of camera and body you have. So um, it's, and a wide angle lens is generally something that is much lower than 16 millimeters down to maybe 8 millimeters. Um, that's what is typically known as a wide angle lens. So I've got here an 18 to 135. This is one of the standard lenses that I carry with my camera, which is the X-T2. And a lot of the times I use this lens to shoot a wide angle image. Now the way I shoot a wide angle image is I basically shoot either multiple shots like this, one shot, two shot, three shot, um, and then I stitch that up in Lightroom or Photoshop. Um, alternatively, if I want a nice big panorama, what I'll do is I'll actually shoot vertical. So like this, shooting one shot, two shot, three shot, four shot, sometimes even six or eight vertical shots like this. Uh, and what that allows you to do is have a lot of information in the vertical aspect of the image because you're shooting it in a panorama and that means the bigger side of the sensor is capturing the biggest image. Now the trick to making sure you have a nice panorama when you stitch it is to make sure that you have an overlap. So when you go from one image to another, you want to have at least 20% or 30% overlap in each image. And the great thing about shooting a, a wide angle like this is that when you stitch that image, that image is going to be huge in terms of its resolution. Now this thing here, you know, it's 18 megapixel or 24 megapixel. Now 24 megapixel each image, when you stitch it together, five or six images, you can imagine how big that would be. So if you want to print it, you can print uh, and a, you can print it as big as this wall basically um, so um, so let me show you how I do this so let me show you how I stitch those images I've got a few images here on the computer and I'll take you through them now so here are some of the images um, I shot in Abu Dhabi and these images are four or five vertical images that I shot in the same orientation. So basically shooting the camera like this in vertical orientation and taking five different shots. Now once I got those shots in Lightroom, all I have to do is select all of these like so. I will right click these and I'll go to merge into panorama in Photoshop. Now Lightroom has its own capabilities. It can create panoramas and I sometimes use it but other times I would like to use Photoshop because you can do further finer adjustments in, in uh, Photoshop once the merged image has been created. So for this purpose, we're gonna load it up into Photoshop. So create a merged image in Photoshop. Photoshop will launch and what it'll do, it will create a merge. Um, it, it will allow you to choose what settings you want. I'm gonna use auto here. I don't use any of these, basically just shoot an auto, click OK. And the one thing you want to do is make sure the blend image together option is ticked. That will basically blend the exposures together in case there's slight variation from one to the other. The other tip you ha I can give you is basically when you're shooting, you can shoot in manual mode. So basically you control your aperture and your ISO and shutter speed so that all the exposures are the same. Um, but if you're shooting them generally within the same time span, i.e. you start from one and you finish the sequence, that's generally fine. Photoshop will take care of the rest. The other thing I'll do is I'll tick the vignette removal option. Click OK and let Photoshop think it over. It'll take a few seconds and it will create the panorama for us. Um, so there we go. That's the final merged sequence. Let me just close this section here and close this one down so we can see the image command zero to make it fit nice and big so what you can see is Photoshop has created a final merged image which is a nice wide angle what I would normally do is come in here and I'll make sure my crop ratio is reset I don't want to use any specific ratios here and I'm just gonna drag the left handle and the right handle across 
across I'm going to crop from the bottom and crop from the top until I'm happy tick that box to complete the merge and crop and there we go that's the final image that we have in as the merged image you can see foot does a really great job at merging the multiple exposures together and blending them so it looks seamless um, that's the final version so I can click OK and that will basically complete the edit and send the image back into Lightroom but I'm just going to show you what I've done already so um, here's the outcome of that image so this is what I ended up creating I used my own Lightroom presets um, I'll put a link down the bottom if you're interested check them out um, but I used one of the Lightroom presets here to give this photo this kind of look um, here's another example which I shot in Reno now this sequence here is basically multiple images shot um, and you can see that there, there are shot maybe not fully vertically aligned the camera moves down a little bit and that's where having that extra room shooting vertically helps a great deal when stitching the final panorama and here's the final result now this panorama looks very nice let me show you the actual size of this one this uh, image is 9558 pixels wide that is a huge huge resolution um, I don't think any cameras can shoot that high not yet um, so we have great bit of detail you can zoom into the image you can scroll across just if you want to print that image you know you can have a huge print out of this image because we have stitched together this multiple exposure here's an example where I just shot two standard shots so I shot horizontally one and two and I stitched them in Lightroom that was again in in on the same trip I think this was in Dubai and um, I shot the two images together and basically merged them into a nice looking panorama in Photoshop um, so that's pretty much it I mean it's it's very simple um, don't let the fact that you don't have a wide-angle lens either with you or you haven't bought one don't let it prevent you from taking great photos you can still create wide angle shots thanks for tuning into this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to my channel subscribe help me get to a thousand subscribers that is my goal for 2018 and I'll see you soon in another video take care bye bye